morning, everybody. Um, my name is Corey. This is Andrew. And we spent a lot of time of our summer at Camp Cowan. We really love uh, the ministry that work goes forward there. And I want to take just a second and thank um, Debbie and Tuck and Pastor Don for inviting us to play for you this morning. Uh, so we're going to do a few songs that the way we do them at camp, okay? So if everybody will stand up with us, uh, the first thing that we're going to do to open up the service is what we call the I Fly Away Medley or I'll Fly Away Medley. So we're going to start out with a couple verses of I'll Fly Away. We're going to go into this little light of mine, and then we're going to go into Do Lord to finish it out. All right, so here we go. Right. A some glad morning when this life is over, I fly away to a home on God's celestial shore. I'll fly away, and I'll fly away. your lights. So everybody take your index finger and hold it up, and that's going to be our lights. Here we go. So this little light of mine, I'm going to let it shine.
favorite part has probably been the four square and evening worship. Well, I've really liked making new friends and learning more. I feel like I'm definitely stronger in my faith and I feel like I have almost like a new lens of perspective on life. Meeting all these new people that believe in the stuff that I do, it's really nice. So I most definitely would come back next year because I get to learn more and study better about Jesus. Uh, I wanna come back next year because I just think it'll be fun and I get to meet fun. Definitely come. Come. Yeah, come. If, if you're someone that's looking to come to camp and you're not sure if you'll like it, I guarantee that you will love it and that I think you should really come. I mean, I don't like being away from home, but I love this place. Uh, I would say it's fun. You should come and you'll have a great time. Uh, my voice is hoarse because I have been worshiping the Lord. And you understand that all these people you're going to be seeing in heaven. The environment is great and when you're here and when you are at camp for a significant amount of time, you can feel the Holy Spirit moving here. It's like the sign says, before you get here, people do meet Jesus here. Now can you hear me? Good morning. That's better. Welcome. We're glad you're here this morning. We're glad those of you who are watching on Facebook Live are joining us on this Camp Cowan Recognition Day. Uh, in your bulletins this morning, there's a little insert uh, with a couple of neat stories, one from Rick Hare and one from Debbie Shadowin about their experiences at camp and memories they've had, and then a schedule for the camp this year. Uh, this is an emphasis day that we want to get kids started signing up for camp. So please review the schedule and see Debbie Shadowin about getting signed up for camp today. Uh, I want to go over a few brief announcements this morning. Uh, we still have Outside the, the middle doors here, we are still collecting food for the food pantry at Breen, Pres Breen Presbyterian Church. Uh, please continue to bring that. It is not just something we do on the holidays. This is a year-round project that we're trying to help Bream, uh, help those who are in need of help. So uh, please keep that in your mind and each Sunday bring something. Uh, did you enjoy Jane Mooney's music? Jane will be singing again next Sunday, but Joyce and Joyce and I will be joining her in a trio. So uh, that's that'll be the gathering music next week. Uh, Wednesday, want to remind you that we have Zoom Bible study uh, this week. Are we meeting in the gathering area, Pastor? We'll try that. We'll try meeting down here in the gathering area rather than up on the third floor. So uh, just come through the front doors here, and we'll be sitting around a table somewhere and join us for for Bible study uh, next Sunday. At 2 o'clock, we were going to have a deacon ordination service for John Tucker. So we invite you to attend while John becomes 
uh, an ordained deacon. Uh, also next Sunday at 5.30, there is a pastoral ordination celebration for Kyle Huffman at Oakwood Baptist Church. Kyle has helped us several times here with music, so you won't want to miss that either. Uh, also, uh, on behalf of the trustees, I want to thank you for the patience that you have uh, shown in all the different changes we've had to make during COVID. We've been on the park a lot. We've been in here. We've been just about everywhere. We have uh, attacked it very well though, and I'm very happy to say that during all the COVID, we did not ever have an outbreak that came out of the church. Now that being said, next Sunday, we're returning to the sanctuary. The couple of things though, I want to remind you, there is no food or drink other than water allowed in the sanctuary. Do not try to go through those double doors with coffee. I will tackle you. <laughs> It, it's easy for us to have those things in this room because of the hard surfaces, but up there we have upholstery and we have carpet, and it's no place for coffee and cake, okay? Water's okay, but nothing else. Uh, the doors here at the ministry center will be locked at 1115. So if you're one of these people that don't leave home until 11 o'clock, you probably won't be able to get in unless you come through the front doors on Washington Street. Those doors will be open, the ushers will be up there, but we lock these doors at 11.15 for security reasons, so try to be on time. Um, I know a lot of you uh, uh, like may maybe making a grand entrance, but try to be on time next Sunday. Thank you. and Lisa are out of town celebrating their anniversary. As our call to worship, I wanted to read what he sent me this morning out of Psalm 119. He sent me a portion of 97 through 104. It's the portion of the psalm based on Mim, the uh, Hebrew alphabet letter. Starting in verse 97, we read, Oh, how I love your law. I meditate on it all day long. Your commands make me wiser than my enemies, for they are ever with me. I have more insight than all my teachers, for I meditate on your statutes. I have more understanding than elders, for I obey your precepts. I have kept my feet from evil path, from every evil path, so I might obey your word. I have not departed from your laws, for you yourself have taught me. How sweet are your words to my taste, sweeter than honey to my mouth. I gain understanding from your precepts, therefore I hate every wrong path. Let's pray. Almighty God, our Heavenly Father, Lord Jesus Christ, Holy Spirit, you're the one true living God, Holy Trinity, and you've invited us into this day. And Lord, we thank you for your invitation into this space, into this time that we can worship and adore you. We can sing praise to you. The Lord, we can come before you with our petitions and our requests. Lord, we can just pause and be quiet in the stillness of your sanctuary and know that you are God. Lord, may you use this time to inspire us, to refresh us, renew us, revive us, that as we go through our paths of the week, that we might be spreading that wonderful good news that life is found in you. Lord, may you bless our time together. Lord, those here in person and those that are watching by uh, the live stream, and we pray, God, that you would work in each of our hearts and that, Lord, it would be the start of a wonderful week, celebrating, glorifying, and announcing you to the world. In Christ's name I pray. Amen. All right, we're going to do, we're actually going to turn this into a campfire service for just a few minutes. So if everybody would stand with us again. And if you are a current Cowan camper counselor, somebody who's been to Cowan that knows the motions to the songs that we do at Campfire, please come down front so you can demonstrate for everybody how we do this. So we're going to pretend for a minute that we're outside and it's dark and we've got a roaring campfire right here in the middle of the floor. <laughs> <laughs> And 
our first song that we're going to start off, uh, this is a favorite of the kids at camp. We get this request every day for campfire. This is called Pharaoh, Pharaoh. All right, here we go. <laughs> all right, and the next one is a favorite of the kids at camp. This is a song called I Like Bananas, all right? You'll catch on real quick. Now, in the middle of the song, we do switch gears, and we slow it down, and we do our best 50s doo-wop impression, okay? So you'll, you'll catch on quick. So here we go. So one, two, three. I like bananas. I know that mangoes are sweet. Slow it down, Zoo.
<laughs> All right, and our last one, um, this one has several motions. It's a song that everybody knows is Lean On Me, um, but the kids have added a lot of words into it over the years as we go. So, so here we go. Um, so, ready? Yep. All right, so. so. Thank you all. <laughs> Because of Jesus, I am A, accepted, adopted, approved, and alive. I am an ambassador for Christ. I am B, beloved, blessed, born again, and a bond servant of Jesus. I am C, chosen of God, a child of God, citizen of heaven, and crucified with Christ. I am D, delivered from darkness, dead to sin, and a disciple of Jesus. I am elect, I am forgiven and free. I am God's workmanship. I am an heir through God and hidden in Christ. I am the image of God and forever in Christ. J, I am justified by faith. K, I am kept for Jesus and known by God. L, I am the light of the world and loved by the Father. M, I am more than a conqueror and a minister of reconciliation. N, I am a new creation. I am not ashamed, I am not forsaken, I am not condemned and I am never alone. I am an oak of righteousness, once was lost, but now I'm found. I'm a priest of the Most High and I am pleasing to God. I am qualified by the Father. I am redeemed, righteous, rescued, ransomed, and reconciled. S, I am a saint and the salt of the earth. T, I am a temple of the Holy Spirit and I am transformed by the renewing of my mind. U, I am under grace and united with Christ. V, I am victorious through Christ and vindicated by God. I am a witness of God's power, a worshiper of Jesus, and washed by the Spirit. I am an ex-enemy of God, I am yoked with Christ, and I am zealous for good works and for the glory of God. That's who I am, and that's who you are in Him. now as we have our offertory prayer. <clears throat> Let's pray. 
Father, we, we thank you for all the blessings that you provide to us. You not only meet our needs, Father, but you, you provide in abundance. And we bless you and we thank you and we praise your name for that. Father, now is the time when we return part of that, that you have given to us and blessed us with, Father. We ask that you take these offerings and bless them. Uh, Father, that they be used in a way that is pleasing to you in the furtherance of the ministry you've given this church. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. If you have your Bibles with you this morning, I invite you to turn to the 20th chapter of the Gospel of John, John chapter 20. As we go over the next couple weeks, we're going to be coming back to the theme of Easter, because it is every day, right? It's resurrection celebration. We get the privilege to go out into the world and to announce that good news. And so I want to come back to John chapter 20 this morning and hopefully make some application for us as the church for what God's calling us to do as we look at that passage today. If you are able, if you would stand as we read God's word together, John chapter 20, picking up with verse 1. Early on the first day of the week, while it was still dark, Mary Magdalene went to the tomb and saw that the stone had been removed from the entrance. So she came running to Simon Peter and the other disciple, the one Jesus loved, and said, They have taken the Lord out of the tomb, and we don't know where they put him. So Peter and the other disciple started for the tomb. But both were running, but the other disciple outran Peter and reached the tomb first. He bent over and looked at his strips of linen lying there, but did not go in. Then Simon Peter, who was behind him, arrived and went into the tomb. He saw the strips of linen lying there, as well as the burial cloth that had been around Jesus' head. The cloth was folded by, up by itself, separate from the linen. Finally, the other disciple who had reached the tomb first also went inside. He saw and believed. 
We'd like to think they believed the resurrection, but what we're told here by John, that beloved disciple, that younger one there, they didn't yet understand from the scriptures that Jesus was to rise from the dead. They just believed the report the tomb was empty. Let us pray. Heavenly Father, we thank you for these moments you've given us together today. And Lord, as we would look into your word, I pray it would be more than just an exercise of thought and mental exercise, but it would be an issue of you taking hold of our hearts and stirring us deep within, that Lord, we would see just how powerful that work was that day as you rose from the dead, gaining victory over sin, death, and the grave for each and every one. And Lord, as we have privilege this day, may you allow to focus upon your word. Don't let our minds rush ahead to the events that we think will come today or tomorrow or the tomorrows of life, nor be caught in the yesterdays of life. But for these moments, fix our eyes upon you, for you are truly the author and perfecter of our faith. Lord, I ask that you would take these simple words I have prepared and allow them to be a means by which you speak to our hearts this day. I pray in Jesus' name. Amen. You may be seated. It's early Sunday morning. As John remembers and as he writes it down, it's daybreak. It's even just before daybreak. It's near the end of that fourth watch as you're moving from 5 to 6 a.m. in the morning. Mary Magdalene and the other Gospels tell us there were other women that went with her. They went to the tomb, and you recall, they went there for the purpose of doing one last preparation, a proper preparation, a right barrier for Jesus. Well, John focuses on Mary Magdalene. A little bit about Mary. Okay. I have a slide up there. You go. There we go. Mary Magdalene. Mary Magdalene, we're told in Mark chapter 16, verse 9, when it tells us about her coming to the tomb, she's a woman from Magdala. And she was a woman whose life was truly tormented. Her life was just ripped right and left in every direction. When she encountered Jesus, she was possessed by seven demons. And they warred within her and warred with her. Her life was a shambles. Her life was out of control. Her life looked destined for doom. And Jesus showed up. And Jesus freed her from those seven demons. And we know from the gospel account that Mary Magdalene is right there along with the others who followed Jesus, heart filled with gratitude, heart filled with love, heart filled with, with appreciation for this one who freed her from the bondage that had held her for so many years. And it was on that early Sunday morning that Mary and the others made their way to the tomb. And as they went to the tomb, they saw what it's open and they saw that it was empty and when they saw that Mary runs back John tells us and comes where Peter and John are hiding they're fearful of what may be taking place they're fearful at the next moment Roman soldier to rush in and arrest them but she goes and tells them the tomb is empty the body's gone John says, didn't know where he's at. And so John and Peter take off from their hiding place in a room somewhere inside the city, and they begin to run to the tomb. Well, that would be like me running and my daughter Nardis running. <laughs> Nardis is extremely thin and physically fit. I am old and overweight and has always been and slow. It's about what we've got. Peter and John take off and for the first few feet. They're neck to neck, but very soon John's ahead. And John gets to the tomb. And when John gets there, he doesn't go inside the tomb. He just stops and looks in. And remember, the tomb is hewed back into the rock. It's where they quarried the rock that they used to build the temple. And then there's a shelf cut in the rock in an inner room. And then beyond it is the burial chambers where the, the different uh, ossuaries would be placed. But there on that shelf, 
itself is where Jesus' body had been wrapped by Nicodemus and Joseph of Arimathea quickly with the spices. The women intended to come and wash and to rewrap and lay him there with a lot of tender love as one last act of love for the master as they came there. But what they found is the shelf, there lays the linen cloth. Over to the sides folded the head covering, the shroud, the hood, the napkin, depending on your translation, that cloth that covered the face, and it's folded up neatly. And one thing's for certain, the tomb is empty. It's empty. The body's gone. And what John tells us, they believe the women's report. Yes, the tomb is empty, the body's gone, but where in the world is Jesus? They didn't quite have it yet. They weren't quite remembering everything he had told them on at least three occasions we see in the Gospels. Since they were in Caesarea Philippi, Jesus tells them he would be betrayed, he would be turned over to the Romans, he would be put to death, and on the third day he dries. But they never got to that third day. They were still stuck in their sorrow because on Friday, Jesus had died. And last week, we spent a little time talking about the stone. That stone, it stood in the way as long as it was over here covering the entrance. No one could see in, right? It had been sealed by the Roman seal. It would take an act of Congress of the day to open that stone. And yet the stone is rolled away so that all can see in. The barriers are relieved so that the truth can be revealed that that tomb is empty. Jesus is not there, but he's risen as the angels had proclaimed. But John and Peter, they aren't quite there yet. They just know the tomb's empty. But the empty tomb revealed the truth that the Lord is risen. He is alive. He is not there. He is risen indeed. Right? That's the message we get to tell. That's the news we get to announce to the world. That's the news that we get to tell the world that he is risen. Quit my clicker work. Will you advance that, please? Thank you. Now you're going to have to watch me. <laughs> I don't know what's up. The truth is revealed. We get to announce that. Peter and John were the first, along with the women, to announce that Jesus is risen. He's alive. And you and I have that same privilege. It's really a command to go out into the world and to pass the news that he is risen. He is alive. Our Savior has conquered sin, death, and the grave for all time, right? We don't have to bring this animal to be sacrificed for sin any longer. He took it upon the cross. He paid it in full. And the empty tomb assures us of that truth, that life is found in him, that we can be forgiven, that we can have a relationship with the Father, which was broken in the garden by sin. We can have that relationship now to know him as our Heavenly Father. We get to pass on our faith. Now, if I wanted to be really camp friendly, I'd have four people get up and run a relay race and pass us around the room, but I won't ask us to do that because I couldn't run the first, second, third, or last leg. All right? But in the process, when there's a race, the runner has the baton, they run, they get to the next one. There's this time of parallel where they run together and eventually they hand it off and the person takes it. Other hand, by the way, right, left, left, right, right, left, you know. You catch it and then you run to the next one. It's that passing on of the baton of faith. You and I as believers in the Lord Jesus Christ, you and I as the church today have the call of God to pass that baton of faith on to the next generation. And if we don't, 
what's going to happen? Are the rocks going to tell the story? Are the robins going to announce it in the morning when they're singing? Are the flowers going to declare it? They do declare God's glory, folks. But the message of an empty tune and salvation through the cross work of Christ is your and my responsibility to take that baton and pass it on. But how we do that, well, that varies. Some approach is we bring y'all to church and you hear the preacher and maybe once a year somebody gets saved. Well, let's do that, okay? I'm the preacher, year one. I saved Jim Downey. He's right here with me. And that's great, isn't it? We rejoice, we're excited. We baptize Jim, it's great, it's wonderful. And the year passes. And then year two, preacher goes. Gets Nancy, brings Nancy over. See, this is Callan. This happens all the time at Callan. You get volunteered. <laughs> and year two, we celebrate. We've got Nancy, and we've got Jim, and it's wonderful. And it goes like that. In year three, there's three. Year four, there's four, right? And so often, that's how we grow the church. But you know what? That is not God's design. What is God's design? Each one for each one. Ah, you all stay right there. <laughs> I didn't sit you down. You're going to stay right here on this side, right there. Okay? Thank you. Nancy, staying with Jim. All right. But then the preacher goes. Oops. Sorry, guys. Thank you. And gets somebody and brings them to the Lord. But see, God's design is you just don't bring them to the Lord. You spend time praying together. You spend time reading the Word of God together. You spend time growing in the Lord together. So that as I pass the baton of faith to, to Debbie, I'm going to hold on to it, I got one, sorry. No problem. It'll ruin the illustration at that point. But I pass that baton of faith on to her, and at some point then, we both go out and get someone. stand right here. One got two who got how many? Four. Okay. Now, we spend time together in God's Word, corporately, as couple. We share the gospel. We talk about it. We grow in the Lord. We pray together. We worship together. We serve together. And we go out. And we get somebody. Need to go get somebody. Somebody who can walk the steps. This is point, this is point. Come over here, a little tighter, a little closer, I'm sorry, a little tighter. Okay, one got, two got, four got, wow. Now, yeah, they do, don't they? Over here, 
one got one, one got one, and the same number of moves you have three. <laughs> and over here you've got, go get somebody. Your years passed, you've been discipled. Go get somebody, bring them up. Gonna have to squeeze on over here, make a couple rows, it's okay. Oh, couple rows. Be a couple rows. Yeah. Just watch the sound equipment. I'm a tall one. Okay. Okay. <laughs> You're getting a little lonely over here. Okay. <laughs> I'll stand here with you. Okay. <laughs> one got one, two. Two got four, four got eight, eight got three. Three. Wow. One got one, two got four, four got eight, eight got 16. And that's the work of one disciple. See, that's God's design. It's not that just we get somebody now and then. You know, unfortunately, there are churches that go a whole year and never have a single baptism. I've been there. You work hard, it just doesn't ever seem to, and when it does happen, you really celebrate. It's like, wow, this is a once, we filled the baptistry. It's been years. Okay? But God's design is, is that each one, as they are with the Lord, walking with the Lord, and then bringing someone alongside in that process of discipleship, teaching them and training them and sharing with them and growing them with them and living life together, they go out and get two more, and then those four get four more, and so forth and so on. Now everybody, if you can do the stairs, go out and get somebody and bring them up. Just, just fill the front up here. Just fill the front up. <laughs> yeah, you, you just get, join the crowd. Join the group. You're lonely. Dick makes a good observation. There's more up here than there is out there now. We've gone over the balance. We're heavier up here. That's good, Dick. Yes. Nancy, you get wide, wide enough to get everybody? Yeah, okay, good. One got one, and that was two got two, and that was four got four, and that was Eight got eight, and that was 16 got 60, and that was plus a few because I had Jim and Nancy also go get someone. What would happen? Just with me for a moment. What would happen if we as a church got prayed up, got engaged in God's word, got engaged with one another, and we started doing what Jesus called us to do. Go make disciples. And in a year's time, you make one disciple. And everybody does the same thing. In the first year, we'd double how many people are at church, wouldn't we? 
And if those people are disciples, that means not just, oh, I've got you saved. I'm so glad you're here. Good luck with scripture. You're on your own. <laughs> That's what a lot of churches and pastors do. Meddling now. But if you do what scripture says, and that's to read and to study and invest and to grow and be community, those two get two more and those four get four. In a very short time, you are expanded to the seams, right? Thank you all for your cooperation. You are all candidates for counselors at camp. We need counselors. Sign up. Please have your seats. at camp one time at junior high one I did it until everybody was up front it was pretty exciting and it took seven years seven times we had everybody on the front folks I want us to ask the question what did Mary do she went to Peter and John and said what come and see, see. Let's practice that. Come and see. You want to be a witness this week for Christ? Wherever you're at, whatever life takes you, simply say, come with me and see. Come and see. That may be church worship. That may be Sunday school. That may be a small group you're a part of. That may just simply be sitting down over a coffee, or in my case, tea, and come and see come and see friends i believe as we've come off a wonderful easter celebration it's not over the tombstone is not back in place is it and the tomb is still empty because he is risen right he's risen and that message has not changed and will not change and the call to me and the call to you is to go and invite people to come and see so I leave you with the question let's pray Heavenly Father we thank you for your word we thank you for the privilege you have given us to be able to share a fantastic message with a world that's dying to hear. A message that you have conquered sin and thereby death in the grave. You have risen. May that season every conversation we have this week. May that season every act we engage in this week. May that season the prayers we have for ourselves as the Emmanuel Baptist Church. May that season the prayers we lift for Camp Cowan now all through the summer. Lord, help us to be the church you've called us to be. A church that goes and says, come and see. Lord, I pray you'll lay upon each of our hearts one person for the next calendar year. A person that's in our sphere of influence. It may be a family member. It may be someone in our neighborhood. It may be somewhere we recreate or somewhere that we spend time, we work. But one person, God, that you would have us begin to invest our lives, to invest our story of how you've changed us, to invest your word, to invite them to come and to see you, Jesus. Guide and direct our paths this week.
Help us. Guide us. Give us strength, especially when we grow weary and tired. And Lord, may we be intentional about where we plant the seeds of the gospel. And Lord, we know you'll give growth. May we, your people, be found faithful, announcing to the world that you are alive. Use this time of invitation, God, in several ways. First, Lord, draw us. Let today be the day of salvation for any that need to know you. Let the day be the day for any who need to recommit their hearts to you because the world has just kind of pulled every direction. May today be the day that you call maybe one to be a part of this church family. Lord, let this invitation be yours as we tell the world the good news. You are alive. We ask in Jesus' name. Amen. stand and sing because he lives. Oh, 
as you go out this week, it is my prayer and has been all weekend that God would let this be a launching point for you and for me to go to the world and to tell them he's alive. And because he lives, I can face tomorrow. I can walk through no matter what life brings. I have community. I have him. I have his spirit. And may our lives speak that to those we encounter. I encourage you to take the baton of faith and see who God would have you pass it on to. Corey Andrew, thank you for coming and sharing music with us today. May God richly bless you. Go in peace.